So after the limited success I think I had with the, the last swipe painting, I've decided to do another one. And I'm going to use the similar colours to what I did in the last example, but with some slight changes. So last time I wasn't too enamoured in how the silver reacted. So rather than do a whole bunch of silver for this next one, I've actually mixed my silver with some of this Bluebird. Um, it's an Americana colour. The silver is semi-opaque. I don't know about this one. Let's see, has it got a little mark on it? Uh, I've not looked. I don't see a mark, I'm not sure. So I've mixed these, these two together. Then I've just got this blue on its own. And in the last one I had more uh, matched the ultramarine blue and the emerald green 50-50 but it came out really a little bit dark especially now that it's drying I can see it's really dark so what I'm going to do is mix the two of them and then add just a spot of white to brighten that up a little bit and then I've got the yellow ochre not enough of that came through in my last one so I want to make sure there's more yellow in this one and maybe less of the dark uh, and of course the trusty white so let me get all my little pots together and I'll start mixing up the paint I've gone with my standard formula for the paints, which is one tablespoon of colour to a half a tablespoon of the Floetrol um, and then a half a tablespoon of water. For this one, this is the one which is the mix of the blue and the silver, because I had some silver paint left, so I've just added blue. This is the standard blue, the standard yellow, and this one is the mix between the green and the blue with a little bit of white in, because it was a little bit dark the first time. So now I need to add my silicon oil. I wasn't able to get the oil, but I've got the spray. So I've sprayed some of this into a little pot, and that means I can pick it up now with my pipette here and add a few drops in. So that one's got quite a lot, so I'll add three drops, two there, three there, maybe two there. My white is already pre-mixed and that already has the silicon oil in, so I don't need to do anything with that one. Okay, so what I've decided to do, because um, the colours were a little bit off the last time, I thought rather than do a whole new um, canvas and then not like the colours, I thought I would do a little mini one first of all. So I'm going to set up with a little mini swipe and we'll see how it goes. So I've got the darker colour that's actually um, in terms of its weight, it's the lightest weight. So I'm going to put that one on the bottom and I think rather than pour because it's such a mini little canvas, what I'll do is I'll just spoon it on. So let me bring the uh, video in a little bit closer. Okay, I think you can see. So, I'm just gonna spoon, oh, oh now I already made a mistake. That should be white there. I should be able to um, wipe that off. I've got a damp cloth. That's too far up. Okay, I think we're still on. So I've got my green. Now previously what I've been doing is as well as doing um, lines this way, I've done lines that way and it's created some stripes that weren't so attractive. So I think what I'm going to do is just stick with doing the rows this way. But I do know that I need to get the paint right up to the edge of the canvas so that it will um, run over the edge when I do the swipe. A little bit of the blue there. And I'm not going to be afraid to do my colours on top of each other either because I know they'll blend through. Make sure I've got it right to the edges here. And I might even let a little bit go over the edge and then that's already taken care of. I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to worry about it later. Okay. And then some of the yellow. I can already see these are kind of mixing in together, so that looks good. I'll put some of this yellow right down the bottom. Let that just dribble over the edge there. And then a few spots higher up. A little bit on the edges. Okay, so I think I'm happy with all of my colours. 
Need to add a little bit of white. Oh, and I've forgotten my tool. Okay, here's Mr. Swipey. That means we're good to go. So, let's give this white a shake. Don't do anything else, just in case it's separated into any kind of layers. And now I'm going to make sure I've got plenty up at the top here because I want it to run over those edges a little bit, make sure the top's covered. I don't mind if it goes right over the edge. Already the paint's bleeding up into it. So now, time for my swipe. Let's see what happens. Okay, looking good. Not much going on so far. There is at the bottom. I can be patient. Let's wait and see what happens. I think whilst it's doing that, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this lovely stuff that came off and just dab the edges. So that I've got matching paint then on these sides too. Oh, that looks lovely on the bottom. I can see the cells rolling over the edge here on the bottom. It looks fabulous. I don't want to disrupt those. Let me do it with a little brush. Okay, so I've got a few little gaps. If I just pick up some paint with the brush, I can dab that on and then not disturb the lovely cells that are already going over the edge there. That looks good. I pick up some matching paint that's already dribbled off. That's good. Make sure these corners are covered. I'm going to just look around this other side. Yeah, I need to add a little bit here. So I'm going to pick up again there's some of that blue there. So let's add that one. Ooh, looking very, very nice. A little bit here. That's all good, actually. Doesn't need anything else. I'm loving the way the cells have gone over this side. So let's see how we're doing. So for this one, we've got similar sized cells to what I had on the other canvas. They're quite large. And on the other canvas, that was good because it's a large canvas. On this one, I'm wondering whether I should torch it a little bit just to um, get smaller cells through. But I think I'll, I'll leave it a little while and just see what develops. So I've given it a couple of minutes and a few little bits and pieces have developed, but mostly it's the larger cells. And I think because it's a tiny, tiny canvas, I would like to get some tiny cells if I can. So I'm going to turn my torch on. Let's see what happens. Oh. Okay, so that's certainly made a difference. It's made the larger cells break up now and there's a lot more smaller cells. I should really... Do I need to torch that side? No, I don't. I can't, I can't show you this bottom edge, unfortunately, right now, but it's beautiful. And here we've got much smaller cells developed. So let's me bring the camera down and we can look in a bit more detail. Okay, so that's a little bit closer. There we go. So you can see now in a lot of detail, it's really nice here. Nice little patches here and here and here and this bottom edge absolutely lovely and I like the way the top you know there were large cells just here but with a little bit of torching they've just broken up and kind of laced and feathered into the white up at the top so I actually really like this now and I like the colors so I've still got the the darker the the blue green the teal just here I've got the dark blue but here I've got that blue silver mix and I really like that color now and here too it's um it's working well the silver on its own before kind of just belch through into um, into the surface of the last one and didn't look so good but now I've mixed it with this lighter blue I think it's going to behave itself a lot better and I really like that now okay so I'm going to just tidy up my surface here set this to one side and then see if we can create the same now on a larger canvas okay everything's tidy everything's good clean and ready to go so fingers crossed I can recreate something I like now on this larger one I've got my levels there, I've checked, everything is good to go. Let me just bring over, oh I need a, a larger swiping tool, I've forgotten it. Okay, here he is, ready to go. So now I'm just going to do exactly the same, I'm going to layer up these paints like I did before. My little stir. Um, this time I can pour, so I'm not going to need the st stirrers in there. 
And again, I'm going to make sure that I take the paint right to these edges because I want it to go over the edges a little bit when I swipe later on. So let's see, what have we got next? Let's try this darker blue. We'll give it another little stir. good so far. Ooh, that was a big big lot of paint there. I think I'll keep this blue up at the top because I like it when the blue leaches into the white. That looks really nice. And then this light blue. Don't have so much of this one. I need to make it count. Where's that going to go? Don't want too much to dribble off the edges because I haven't got much. put it on top of these darker ones. And there, a little bit at the top. Okay, and my yellow. I still didn't get an awful lot of yellow come through on that last one, which is funny because I'm sure this yellow is one of the, oh no, actually it's not. Is it one of the heavier colors? I can't remember now. Still, we'll see. Let's see what I can do. I'm going to fill in this gap first of all. Fill in this one. Down at the bottom here. And then a few other little bits and pieces. Okay, maybe a bit at the top. I've got a little bit of space up there. Although I'm not sure, now I've done that, I want the yellow bleaching into the white. So. Let's put another layer of the blue up there. And I'll fill in down at the bottom. Might as well use all this paint rather than wash any of it away, which I don't like to do. It's so expensive. Okay, that's that one done. And what else? Shall I go for a little bit more of the darker colour at the bottom? some more of the blue. Okay, I think we're good. So now I'm just going to let the paint run a little bit because I want to go right over these edges and just make sure they're all covered before I swipe. I haven't got a, a deep canvas, it's just a panel, but it's really nice if I can get it covered in the paint properly. Okay, See now I've got a big yellow patch, maybe I should just have a little more blue there. Although I was saying I couldn't get much yellow, wasn't I? So maybe I don't need to, maybe I should just go with it. Right, let's give my white a, a shake. I'm going to put all those other colours out of the way. I'm going to flood this top part with the white. And I'm not worried about using too much better too much than not enough and again I'm going to go right to the edge at the top right to the edge making sure the canvas is all covered okay that's quite a lot where's the lid oh now there it is lost my lid okay so I think I'm good to go I'm going to use my big tool down the center and the smaller one, I'm just going to kind of swipe out into the corners. Okay, I was getting nervous. <laughs> I just want it so badly to turn out as cute as the little one. Right, here we go then. Big centre swipe. Okay, and now my sideways. One. Clean my tool. And two. Oh, that's weird. Look at that. That light blue, the one I mixed with the silver, is crazy dominating on this one. There's lots of instant action. There's some darker and some yellow down the side. Darker and yellow here. 
but in this centre area, mostly that light blue this time. Now that is interesting because it's obviously very different to the, um, the little test one that I just did. Actually, I've got some really nice stuff on the side just here under the mat, so I'm going to do a little swipe there. I wonder if I'd be able to dry that and save it and use it as, a, as something. We'll see. Okay, so I've got some stuff going on, but mostly it's that light blue. I'm just going to wait for a little bit and see what happens. So I've waited and waited and not much has changed. I can still see this light blue, the one that I mixed with the silver, is really dominating on this one, which is so strange because I actually had the least amount of that paint. So why it suddenly is, is the greater one is anyone's, anyone's uh, guess, really. And it's so different to the little one that we did. I can bring that one back over. You can see this one does have some of the light blue here and here, but it certainly doesn't dominate it like it does in this one. And also there's lots of uh, the, what, the light blue and the silver really feathering nicely up into the white. But um, there's a lot of small cells on these corners and not so much here. I wonder really whether I, um, I'm getting small cells down these edges because of the different tool that I'm using. Because I'm using the small swiper, I may be doing it a little bit more firmly and less firmly in the middle. I don't really know. Anyway, I think I do want to see if I can get some more of the colours to come through. So it's not just this blue. So I'm going to go with the torch which I may regret. It's one of those things you just can't take it back once you've done it, isn't it? So anyway, let's give it a go with the torch and see what happens. Yeah. Not what I was hoping for, quite honestly, because now the white has come through. Let's see if it settles and does anything else. I do have a bit more yellow. Okay, the yellow's coming. I've got some yellow coming here and here now. And I've got some of the darker teal, okay, and the blue. Right, so it's, it's made more colors come through as I'd hoped, certainly. It's also made the white come through a little bit more, which is what I wasn't looking for. But now I'm getting lots and lots and lots of small cells developing everywhere. Apart from this central area where it's kind of still a bit blue and white. Maybe I should do that a little bit more. Should I do that bit a little bit more? Let's give it a try. Oh no, I did it a bit more and got more white. <laughs> oh goodness, it's so unpredictable, isn't it? You really never know what's going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to leave this one a minute to just settle and then I'll come in with the camera to look at a few of the details. So I wanted to just start by looking here and this isn't even on the painting. Look, how annoying is this? This is what's dribbled down off the painting and is on my plastic. I am so hoping it's going to dry like this and I'll be able to use it for something. I don't know what yet. I've got another patch along the bottom here which looks good and a patch over here. I can't get in very well with the camera but it's some um, beautiful kind of peacock colours which has given me a whole other idea for some colour schemes. So here's the actual picture itself take a look and some of these details I'm really loving the sides always the sides and the corners look really nice and it may be that it's that smaller swiping tool that I'm using is doing that and again I've got these lovely swirls coming up into the white that's that light blue paint again with the silver it actually looks really good and I've got more colour now. So before everything, the, the light blue was dominating. Now I've got some more of the, um, the ochre coming through, the teal there, and the bright blue as well. I still have this more white patch just here, which I'm not such a big fan of. I would have liked a bit more colour. But I think overall, from where um, a few days ago, all I was creating was mud um, and nothing good at all with my dirty pores. Now I'm creating these gorgeous cells and gorgeous colours and patterns and I'm absolutely delighted with it. So thank you once again for taking a look at my, at my uh, painting for today. I very much enjoyed doing it and having you following along with my channel. 
here's just a, a final shot of what it looks like wet and of course I'll share as usual of what it looks like when it's dry. And here's the end result. It's now fully dried and it's had a, a protective finish over the top so it's looking very glossy. It's also got lots of texture again on this one. You can see all of the individual cells created so it is looking really nice and more of the yellow came through. You can see the little bits of silver here all around the edge of the, the blue where I'd mixed the light blue and the silver together so it is looking really nice. Uh, I'm actually really delighted with it and um, one thing that I did find on this one that the, I'm still putting my paints on too thick I think. They're probably a little bit too wet, too watery and um, because I'm anxious about getting good coverage on the canvas I'm putting on too much paint. So in fact I got a little bit of just cracking, out a couple of little cracks up here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see. There's just a couple of little cracks in the white hip here but they, they were covered over only with, with the varnish. And just a little bit here where it's just slightly kind of separating a little bit. It really doesn't look bad, it's not that noticeable. But I think um, with my future paintings what I'm going to try and do is be a little bit more confident because I'm so new and very anxious I want to make sure that I've got enough paint and I think I'm using too much and that's probably also what's leading to getting this amount of texture. I actually really love the texture. There's nothing better in my opinion than having 3D cells because it really emphasizes the cell structure in the painting even more but I think for my next one I'm going to try and be bold and use a little bit less paint. So there we go that's the finished article. Thanks very much for looking.